YouTubers, it's your girl Shannon from Evie and Chill. And you guys remember in our last video, we tested out Park Assist on the Mach-E. Now we have to do it with the Model 3. We have to compare it to Tesla. Now I know they're a little different, ones like the SUV, ones like a sedan, but we have to test out the technology Ford versus Tesla. So we are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do perpendicular parking and parallel parking using the Tesla. Now we are in the same parking lot, so that way we're kind of being a little scientific here. We're using like the same spaces. Um, so size should be like relatively the same. So we will see how it goes. I'm so excited to do this. Okay, so we're gonna do the Tesla parking and then we'll compare it to the Mach-E. At the end, we'll have like a little bit of an analysis. So I'm really excited to do this. Okay, and real quick, check this out, you guys. We did another mod to the Model 3. Okay, can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, it's right here, it's right here. We added red caliper covers. Now we bought these from RPM Tesla, but they're not just any red caliper covers. Get in a little bit closer here. You guys, do you see that? It says EV and chill. Okay, let's find a different one where you can see maybe some of the whole thing. But it says EV and chill. I'm so excited about this. Okay, maybe you kind of have to like really know what it says a little bit. Okay, here it is. Here is the chill part. So EV and chill. It is on our calipers. I'm really excited about this. I know it's like one of those minor details. You probably only notice if like it's your vehicle, but if you see it's on the road, check out the caliper covers. I'm really excited about this. I think it totally makes the car pop. It brings it all together with that black and red. Loving it. Okay, uh, so now let's not waste any time. Let's get to it, let's do parking. We're gonna do perpendicular and then parallel. Let's take a look and see how the Model 3 performed. Now just getting out, I'm noticing there is a lot of space here on the driver's side. So let's go see the other side here. I'm a little nervous to be honest. It was getting pretty close to this vehicle when we were parking. But okay, this side is looking good, plenty of room. But it also makes me nervous because there's so much space. Let's look at the other side. Okay, okay, we are definitely in the lines here. Let's take a look. Okay, I feel like that looks pretty straight, right? Okay, I'm liking this so far. Definitely less space on the passenger side than the driver's side though. Now I wonder if maybe that's because like there's always gonna be a driver, so maybe they're giving the driver a little bit more space. Um, but sometimes you do have a passenger and they need a little bit of space too. Or is it judging the distance to the car? Okay, now let's take a look. Let's see how deep this baby got. Okay, looking right here at the lines. There is totally enough space here and here, like the vehicle is definitely in the lines. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at the back. Uh, loving those calipers. Okay, here we are at the back. Are you guys, like, it even went a little bit further back than this vehicle, and I'd be willing to bet they parked themselves. Okay, but take a look, you guys. We still have a lot of space between the tail and the curb, um, but it is definitely, like, in the spot we saw up front. It's almost like it saw this was, like, the end of the spot, so it's kind of interesting. Um, but plenty of space back here. I have to hand this parking job to Tesla. I mean, technically, even though it's a little bit more on one side, it's obviously not completely in the middle. It really is well within the lines. I mean, honestly, I think I've seen like worse parking by humans at the mall. <laughs> uh, so Tesla did a really good job with this and I'm really impressed. Now, if we compare that real quickly to the perpendicular parking job that the Mach-E did last time, I think I was a little disappointed in the Mach-E. I mean, technically it did park, but it was kind of on the line, like literally on the line, even over the line on some areas. I was kind of disappointed in the Mach-E, but this time I am really impressed with the Tesla. The Tesla did 
a good job. However, I did notice that the Tesla parked in between two vehicles. That's where it chose to park because the cars are choosing where they're gonna park. The Mach-E chose to park by one vehicle and the other line was empty. So I'm gonna give the Tesla one more shot here at perpendicular parking. We're gonna see where it parked. I'm gonna try to go by a lane here where there's not like a ton of cars like right next to each other so it can't choose to go in the middle and we'll see how perpendicular parking goes there. So hopefully the Tesla will choose to park like in between a vehicle and a curb or in between like a vehicle and an empty spot. So we'll see how the next perpendicular job goes real quick. Let's check it out. Let's see how the Model 3 did. It looked like it was a little crooked at first and then it seemed like it straightened out. Let's see. Okay, okay, it looks, I don't know, what do you think? Oh no, you guys, oh no. Oh, stop it, stop it. Look at this. This is just like what happened with the Mach-E. Okay, this is crazy. Oh, this is totally crooked. What? Okay, this is kind of, I was not expecting this from Tesla. I'll be honest with you guys. I had higher standards. Okay, let's take a look at the front. Let's see how deep it parked. Okay, so you can see the line is right here. Let's take a look. Okay, I mean, it looks like the car is pretty in the spot, but there's definitely some front that is sticking out. Let's take a look and we'll see how deep it got. How deep did that tail get to the bushes? Let's see. Oh, snap. Look at this. Okay, there is way too much room back here. Definitely could have gone a little bit further back. Uh, do you hear that rude ice car? Oh, snap. Okay, so definitely like literally on the line. I think this is over the line. Let's take a look here. Oh, yeah, that is a little bit over the line. Oh, that's so disappointing. And let's take a quick second to talk about this because you guys, this perpendicular job is so different than the one that just happened. It's almost like Tesla kind of regressed in its parking abilities in like minutes. Um, it is interesting that it parks so well between two vehicles, but when it's between a curb here and a vehicle on the other side, it is so bad. Like that is insane. It's really honestly disappointing in Tesla because Tesla, like, autopilot when it's on the highway it can like accelerate it can decelerate it can change lanes it can exit the highway for you but doing something simple like just parking it really struggled with i don't want to jump into like a complete analysis just yet because we do have to check out parallel parking so let's parallel park this baby we'll compare it to the maki -E, and then we'll do like our final thoughts at the end
let's check out this parallel parking job. Okay, you guys, I'm a little nervous because it seemed like it was really good and then it seemed like it kind of creeped up a little bit too much forward and that's exactly what happened. Okay, so take a look here. Oh, you guys, this is our parallel parking job. <gasps> look at how much room is in the back. Are you seeing this? Holy crap, you can fit like a smart car in there. Literally, that's like just what the Mach-E did. Okay, let's take a look at the front here. Okay, but look at this front here. That is totally over. I'm gonna have to go back and compare to see how it did with the Mach-E. Uh, but yeah, that is definitely something that is gonna need some fine tuning. Um, but let's go ahead, let's look at the back one more time because that is crazy. If you had like a motorcycle or a smart car, again, perfect spot right here. Okay, now let's look at the side here. Okay, again, that's looking good. That's plenty of room. It gets totally like close enough to the curb where it's not too much, but just enough. Okay, also quick side note again, you guys, ah, I'm loving these calipers. They look so good. I know this is not even related to parking, but they just add such a nice pop and I'm loving the name in there. Let's just do a quick comparison between the Mach-E and the Tesla because you guys, they both have things that they can improve upon. That was kind of embarrassing. Like I'm embarrassed for the Mach-E. I'm kind of embarrassed for Tesla. Like parallel parking, that was rough stuff for both vehicles. You might remember how the Mach-E parked. Um, it parked really similarly to the Tesla. It had the nose over the line. I think it might have even had the nose a little bit more over the line than the Tesla did. But either way, there was a ton of space in the back for both vehicles. Both vehicles left a ton of space in the back and then both vehicles had their noses over the front of the line. And that's just not acceptable. Now, okay, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, it's park assist. And that's exactly what it is. It assisted me in parking. It probably did like 75 to 80% of the work for me. I really just had to fine tune the rest of the way to get in between the lines. Um, so park assist, it does do the hard parts for you. Um, it's parallel parking, especially like it gets you in between the vehicles and that is the hardest part. That's where I struggle. Sometimes if I have to parallel park, maybe I don't need to go out that badly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, parallel parking, it is difficult though. So having that assistance is really good. So even though it is called park assist, what gets me, what bothers me, and you can agree or disagree, drop it in the comments below, is that after I use park assist whether it's in the Mach-E or the Tesla it'll tell me that it's completed it'll tell me it's finished the Mach-E had that little flag too uh, the Tesla said that it was done when it tells me that it's finished or completed that means that like I don't have to do anything else I can get out of the vehicle and go on my merry way so I wish it would say something like We've done as far as we can do for now. Now you take over. <laughs> I wish it would give me some sort of indicator like, hey, you need to fine tune the rest of this. Um, and maybe that's getting really nitpicky here. But to me, when I hear the words like finished or completed, like I think the job is done. So when I get out and I see the nose is too far over or if I'm like perpendicular parking and I see that the vehicle is way too crooked, that to me is kind of frustrating. But again, it does do the hard parts for you. So Park Assist definitely does its job. It assists. So kudos to Ford and Tesla because you guys, this is a huge technological feat. I don't wanna bypass that. Like this is a huge deal that cars can do this themselves. Like that is crazy. Uh, people like could only dream of this like, I don't know, even a few years ago. So it's kind of like we're in the Jetsons. I don't know if that reference is dating myself or not. <laughs> um, but now it's gonna sound like I'm talking out of the other side of my mouth because as great as Park Assist is, as cool as these cars are technology wise, I'm left a little bit disappointed. Um, you can completely disagree with me. Drop it in the comments below. But I am left disappointed because honestly, I expected more from both Ford and Tesla. I almost expected a little bit more from Tesla. Like I'm actually more disappointed by Tesla than Ford. I feel like the Mach-E kind of performed like on par with my expectations. Maybe that's why I'm not as disappointed by them. Um, Ford Copilot 360, I mean, that's worked out really great for me. I think the technology is really good. Um, I mean, lane keep assist when I'm driving down the highway, it stays on the lanes. The intelligent cruise, it'll modulate the throttle. Um, so it'll go faster and slower when I need it to without telling me to. I really appreciate how it like fluctuates the speed limits. So when it came to park assist, I figured it would do an okay job. Like I didn't think it'd be like phenomenal. I didn't think it would be awful. It is definitely slower than I thought it would be. And that goes for both Ford and Tesla. It is just slower parking than like an actual human. But ultimately like I am disappointed in Ford because like Ford has cameras and sensors all 
all around the vehicle. Like technically that vehicle knows what's happening around the car more than I do as the driver. Um, so I kind of expected it to do a whole lot better perpendicular parking and parallel. So it did leave me a little bit disappointed. And the Park Assist, it came standard with the premium Mach-E that we have. It doesn't come standard with Select, so I think that is interesting to note. It did come standard with that. So I do appreciate that. I think there's like a whole lot that it offers. Okay, now let's talk about Tesla because honestly, I'm more disappointed in Tesla's Park Assist than with Ford's. Um, so kind of carrying on onto like Park Assist being standard with the premium. With the Tesla, Park Assist did not come standard. It was a part of the FSD package that we had to buy. Now, if you purchased it, it'd be $10,000. Back when we bought it, it was $7,000. But honestly, like that is a lot of coin. I guess you could say it's a lot of Dogecoin. <laughs> No, like for real, that would be a lot of Dogecoin. <laughs> um, so I am kind of disappointed because you pay all that extra money. You would think Tesla would at least have perpendicular parking down. So that was like a big letdown because Tesla even has more cameras and sensors than the Mach-E does. So I thought they would have for sure had that down pat. I mean, Tesla, I expected more from the technology because honestly, they are more technologically advanced than Ford. Um, not throwing Ford under the bus because I love the Mach-E, but just point blank, Tesla is just more technologically technologically advanced because at the core they're a technology company where Ford at the core is like an automobile company. I mean even just looking at the technology that Tesla has like autopilot can get around vehicles on the highway it can exit the highway for you like that is so technologically advanced but at the same time you're telling me it can't just perpendicularly park um, so that is kind of really disappointing. Now I do have to say honestly because both vehicles do park really slowly You probably even saw in the Mach-E video when I was parking at the grocery store A lady even honked at me because the Mach-E was like perpendicularly parking so slowly. I don't use park assist a ton I think it's just easier if I do park myself. It's easier. It's faster But when I do want to use it, I want it to perform really really well But these are just my thoughts on the Mach-E and the Tesla and park assist. Um, let me know your thoughts Tell me if my expectations are too high or tell me if you agree are these parking jobs total fails to you I would love to hear so drop it in the comments below and don't forget if you've watched up until this point and you haven't done it yet do me a favor and hit that subscribe button it helps my channel to grow well that's all I've got for now thanks for watching I'll catch you next time